And um, it seems to me we can start. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all those who have joined us for this uh, event. We are very happy to, to have this uh, kind of, as was just said, baby shower for this our uh, little baby, who is, which is our this uh, uh, new uh, methodological tool for conducting a survey on SDG 16. We have a quite uh, uh, a packed event. We have 12 people, six men, six women. At least here we have a, a achieved equality. Um, and we are, yeah, so I will just, just to remind you two um, basic rules. You, you can see, you can have, we have this uh, uh, interpretation in, in, two, in three different languages, so English, French and Spanish, so you can access the interpretation if you click the button on the, uh, the, the bottom bar. And then there is, uh, for those of you who are, would like to ask questions, again, you, you can ask them, write them in the Q&A uh, section. I, I think we are all quite used to this kind of tools. So we can start, and I would uh, first of all call uh, Arvin, Arvin Gadgil. Director of the UNDP Oslo Governance Center to share his initial thoughts with us. Garvin, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Enrico. Thank you so much. Dear everyone, thank you very much for coming for this very special side event, uh, which I uh, think of as the launch of a unique global public good that has the power to take us leaps closer to justice, peace, and inclusion for all. My name is Arvind Gadil, and I am the director at UNDP Oslo Governance Center, UNDP's global policy center for applied research and critical, on critical governance issues. We Norwegians are quite informal, you know. Uh, in fact, we only put on a tie when there is a party. And I have put on a golden tie today because while we will discuss very serious things, it is also time to celebrate the fruits of a long-term long project on complex issues that has involved people from across many institutions and experts from at least half of the countries in the world. That is certainly worth celebrating. And while we may see this survey tool and manual as first and foremost a technical one, I also see it as something more. Measuring SDG 16 is essentially about measuring the distribution and consequence of power. As such, this tool is both decidedly technical and practical, but also deeply political in its consequence. That is what makes this so exciting. There is one more aspect of this work which is perhaps easy to forget. The very intention of goal 16 to foster peace, justice and inclusive institutions makes it especially important to include people's voices in monitoring progress towards the goal. This survey tool has the potential to make a significant contribution to that. But of course, essentially, this instrument is a gap filler to complete our knowledge of critical human development issues. It provides comprehensive, high quality instrument that will make data collection and ultimately evidence-based policy change possible. Studies we have done at also Governance Center has shown clearly that the cost of the pandemic is beyond health and economic costs. It is impacting deeply on civil and political rights and on the inclusivity, accountability and effectiveness of governance systems all over the world. We have eight years left, eight years. We need to understand the range and depths of the challenges we are facing and that too urgently. So there are so many colleagues within and outside UNDP who deserve a thank you today. I will mention two. Soon you will meet my remarkable colleague, Mariana Neves, who has spearheaded this project from our side. I am grateful to her for her expertise, enthusiasm and hard work. I would actually also like to acknowledge and express appreciation to Mark Orkin. I don't know, Mark, if you are here who is well known to many in the statistics world and who has long championed the need for this survey and has been part of this journey from the outset. And of course, thank you to the governments of Norway and the UK who has made this whole process possible. Ladies and gentlemen, at this event, we will hear from a few of the countries that have piloted this tool already, and we will hear other experiences on strengthening measurements of SDG 16. At UNDP, we remain committed to continue working with our cherished partners in this project, United of the, the, uh, the Office of uh, Drugs and Crime and the Office of High Commissioner of the Human Rights. 
And we are very ready to support countries in measuring progress on SDG 16s and implement this survey. We invite you to get in touch with us. This tool is only the first step. And in line with the theme of this year's UN Statistical Commission, we look forward to working together with you to connect the dots, to translate better data on SDG 16 to better lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Arvin. Uh, thank you for your inspiring words. Also to remind that what we do uh, you know, through statistics uh, is uh, really to to make the to collect and make the voice uh, audible of uh, yeah <laughs> all the people around the world. Um, thanks a lot again, uh, Angela. Angela is the the chief of the research and the trend analysis branch it, uh, here at uh, UNDC, and also she's also my chief. So uh, pay due <laughs> respect to her, Angela. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Enrico. I was thinking when you said. There is a gender equality in the panel. Uh, I wonder what about uh, uh, age, if we are, uh, and uh, you and I, I think, uh, raise the average. <laughs> I mean, for those who don't know, I'm uh, one day older than Enrico. So I think I'm probably the oldest in the panel. So uh, <laughs> next time we have to think also about the age distribution. Anyway, so welcome to all of you also from us here in Vienna, uh, from the UN Office on Drugs and Crime. And let me tell you, hopefully, why you should stay and hear about the panelists and why what you will, it's important that you learn from what we wanted to introduce to you today. Many of you in the statistical community have done assessment on understanding the quality and the availability of data once the SDG came out. And in almost all the assessment that I've seen across countries, across region, goal six, SDG 16, uh, has always ranked uh, one of the goals where the lack uh, of data was most acute. Uh, and so we are in UNODC very proud to come today at the party to celebrate uh, another tool that we hope can help you statistical community, but also policymakers uh, with the data that this tool can generate uh, to really improve uh, the achievement of SDG and the monitoring. In UNODC, in UNODC, we have a custodian of about 16 uh, uh, SDG indicators, and most of them are in uh, the goal 16. And so we're really seeing how the areas that we cover, being on violence, uh, being on access to justice, being on uh, thinking about trafficking, corruption, are all areas that lack behind in terms of statistical rigor, statistical methodology. Uh, if we compare it to uh, health statistics or, or to education statistics or economic statistics. So uh, we really hope that today we can make a, a step ahead on uh, improving also the availability of standards that we have in improving the, um, the knowledge base that we have in terms of uh, the SDG 16. Uh, we have, as I was saying earlier, this is uh, one element that we can add to our menu. So that means that uh, clearly uh, doesn't uh, uh, probably resolve all the problem, but it can help some countries that have specific needs. Within our menu of services uh, on measuring goal 16, uh, we have uh, training manuals uh, on uh, victimization surveys. And we have seen how over the years, the countries have evolved in developing their own national victimization surveys. Uh, and uh, we hope that uh, we, we see continuously this development. For those countries uh, that uh, are new, that uh, they wanted to really develop a, a new uh, uh, survey on SDG 16, this is the module that can help you. And, uh, and we really hope uh, that uh, that uh, becomes uh, a national instrument at the end. And uh, we develop this not to be a, an international survey, but uh, for a tool to become a national tool for all countries that uh, need that tool. To finish, I just wanted to say that we are also here to celebrate a partnership. And I know that uh, particularly in the Statistical Commission, countries often um, they discuss and uh, tell us clearly to international agency, please coordinate your efforts, come to us with a coordinated support. So I'm really proud that today we can celebrate that we are here together as a UN system to really give you together in a coordinated way the support that you 
uh, may need uh, on monitoring SDG 16. So thank you. Back to you, Enrico. Thank you, Angela. Thanks a lot. Um, indeed, partnerships is a is a thread that will go uh, will accompany us uh, uh, during this event uh, and also in the future. Oh, thanks a lot again. Um, Mariana, I think it is now uh, your turn to, to show us, to introduce us to this uh, baby. Mariana yeah. Neves from the Oslo Governance Center. You Thank you, uh, I'll be speaking, I'm from the NDP Oslo Governance Center, but I'll be speaking on behalf of the three agencies introducing our SDG 16 survey. Uh, but first, I just want to say thank you to all the of you that are in the meeting. I see that some of the NSOs that have contributed are also present beside those that are speaking. So it is a great pleasure to have you here today. Uh, next. And uh, as Angela was saying, unfortunately, our goal is the one that's our, because we, we are very attached to it. Uh, goal 16 is the one that has the, the least, one of the, the least data built only worse is the uh, goal 13. And uh, there are several factors to it. Uh, next. And uh, we see that it's not the same uh, in the old regions. The landlocked developing countries are a little bit better. Latin America is a little bit better. The SIDS might have a very uh, low uh, data availability with only 27% percent of countries having at least one data point since 2015. And this is several factors. It can be a lack of awareness, a lack of funding, of capacity, and as it was said before, of also methodology. On awareness, and as both emphasized by Arvin uh, and uh, by Angela, we have been working together in several initiatives, being one of them, the trainings that we've been doing. We're doing these big regional trainings in Africa, Asia, and uh, Latin America. We plan to, to do more. But on the methodology, we have another project, which is the project we are showing today. Next, please. So the first is to say that until before we got to 2015, there was already some initiatives. And from these initiatives or these guidelines we've been building, but you also have to recognize that before 2015, there was not a lot. And the SDGs with the passing of the agenda gave us opportunity to run after uh, peace, just inclusive uh, institutions. And each of the agencies, but a lot of the agencies and the NSOs have really embarked in trying to contribute to international guidelines, create their own national best practices. And from that, we have several now established uh, guidelines or in access to justice, in, um, in corruption, in the overall conceptualization of governance, on the guiding principles in relation to human rights. So we're, we're growing, but at the same time they were growing. Uh, and this can be seen by 2020 when we, the framework uh, ceased to have tier three indicators. So now we only have uh, tier one and tier two, meaning they, they have a methodology, but we still have a little bit more to, to go next. And that is where the survey is, because between the data availability, where we are lacking is precisely on the survey base indicators. So where we started is the three agencies, UNDP, UNODC, OSHR, uh, joined the forces to create this survey. And the building from all the experiences, we started with, uh, with taking stock of what it is at national, regional, global. It passed to an expert consultation, so we'd sign a questionnaire, uh, and these countries that had experience in one model or several uh, went through the uh, questionnaire and revised it, commenting. And we thank all the countries present on the list, and I see some of the, the contributors in this meeting. From that point, we understood that only a questionnaire was not enough because some of the comments we were receiving were related to creating uh, guidelines so how to do how to implement not just the questionnaire but just the questionnaire was sufficient so that's when we passed one deliverable to two deliverables to this uh, initiative and it was created the implementation uh, manual 
as well as the questionnaire. Then we went through the cognitive testing in three countries where uh, the questionnaire was tested itself. So how in terms of comprehension, retrieval, judgment, and response. Uh, and these three countries highly contribute in the redesign, again, correcting possible uh, imperfections that we had. There was not uh, much, but there were still. And then we went to the next phase of piloting in eight countries with very different contexts in terms of uh, their national priorities, how they implemented, how the, the operation was, uh, was included, but all of them partnering with the NSO. And these countries gave, uh, gave their contribution in terms of the field experience, the contextualization, the data, the paradata, and several other uh, uh, documentation and factors that then we came to what is now a package uh, which includes the questionnaire for model implementation manual, the copy for uh, copy copy software, as we found that we needed to harmonize uh, how we collect, and also because it was a request from the countries that, uh, particularly now in the COVID context, that we have a tool that they can go with, because PAPI is uh, more and more the questionnaire by paper is more and more not an option. And then we also found as we're going through the piloting that we needed guidelines on how to disseminate because producing and putting in the drawer does not help much. We need to produce and put it out and we put it out in a very clear way. So we also created the operation line. And this all leads to the implementation phase. We're concluding the piloting phase today and passing to the implementation phase today. Uh, next, please. And that is to have uh, data on the survey on six models on access to justice, which is quite new, uh, with, and focuses access to dispute resolution mechanisms. So the civil side, we have another side uh, uh, on violence, on violence report, uh, reporting, which is also access to justice. Uh, we have on the bribery, corruption, here focusing on bribery, discrimination, on governance, focusing on satisfaction of public services and external political efficacy. On the violence, we have the physical, sexual, psychological violence, the harassment, uh, sexual and non-sexual harassment, and we have trafficking in persons. Each of the models can work independently, but we know that as a factor, uh, these phenomena are not isolated. They're not completely isolated. One might affect it. They have a relation between them. So on this sense, it is also important to have these models together. Next being that for each indicator, also they have their specific segregation. And the SDG 16 survey, what it concludes, includes all the recommended segregation for each of the models. That also uh, allows you to have the information for that specific, the segregated for that specific model, but also by others. So one uh, ethnicity might not be for all by only one, but, but if you have the survey, you can use it for all. And the reason we're emphasizing this, next please, uh, next, is because if you go to access to justice, for instance, and this is the indicator 16.33, and we see that 59.2% of respondents that access a dispute resolution, uh, experience a dispute resolution, access it, a dispute resolution mechanism, which is a wonderful information, very useful information, but for it to be relevant, to, uh, to the decision maker to be relevant, to make the change necessary for us to achieve the 2013 agenda. We need to know not only the dispute, but need to know who is it, who is having this constraints, the famous uh, leaving no one behind. Is it a problem with those who are not accessing the gray area? Is it because they don't have access? Is it because of trust? So that means one type of policy making we have to invest. If it's uh, because of the bureaucracy of the process, that's another type of decision. Next, please. And the same can be said about discrimination. We, could, we can have the discrimination, have to have the ground of the discrimination, but we, if we can know where this is occurring, is it occurring in the schools, is it occurring in the workplace? That means there are different actions, follow-up actions, that the countries can enact and can enforce to address these this issues. Uh, next, please. So this is uh, why we are here. So the, the interest instruments are available. 
we have the questionnaire is separated into a core part, which is the necessary, absolute minimum necessary to public indicator, but it has an additional part that helps you understand that phenomenon that is measured by the indicator. Uh, in, and the countries can make, see how they, they choose and adapt. Uh, also, the entire survey, as I just uh, said in the previous slide, can be used as a standalone. So as one single package or specific, specific models, if your data need is for this moment, is more on access to justice, more on violence, is more on this or that, as uh, I think Enrico Angela also said, it will depend at what is the position that you are at at the moment. And the implementation manual would go through the sample requirements, your interviewing guidelines, because some models are sensitive to interviewing, uh, very sensitive to interviewing. Uh, the copy, the, the more detailed explanation, the segregation, the more detailed explanation, the explanation on the models as well. Uh, next, please. And the, the survey itself is estimated to have a duration from the zero to conclusion of 12 months. And this is just a, a general timeline because we know that the service, they have a life of their own and some will take longer, some will take less depending of the capacities, financial resources, sample size, I really a lot of factors, but there are some key factors for success. Next, please. And these factors that we would like to highlight is one, the do your stakeholder engagement, as it was thanks to everyone that we were able to achieve this point. But when you're implementing, having your partners, all your relevant partners uh, involved as early as possible until the end, it is a success factor because it, it will guarantee that your questionnaire is adapted to your context, but also that whatever you produce is going to be used afterwards. Um, to keep it international comparable as possible, because not only not so much to compare with other countries, but also for you to maintain your data series across uh, time. There's been a lot of discussion, the perception for versus experience, that for the experience that we have, that issue is not uh, one which should go dwell too much on it, because the perception has a very real impact. So if I distrust institutions because of corruption and I don't access institutions I don't put these charges in school I don't uh, receive, uh, seek medical advice it there is a real impact so perception needs to be measured experience needs to be measured we also have seen that there's a great willingness to implement and we'll hear more on the from the, the pilots that can emphasize and three countries that are not pilots, but they are champions in each on their own way on SDG 16. And uh, just two more, and uh, because I think Enrico is almost about to cut me out, uh, is one of the principles behind this, the survey is, is do no harm. So for us to be attentive of the process and all of you here, especially then, so that have been experienced with the DHS, have the experience with mix. Uh, which are also sensitive, the service not more sensitive than the others, uh, will already know that, that we need certain uh, precautions. And uh, in the, to finalize, my last uh, last is that now that we embark this new phase, uh, as UNDP, OSHR, and UDC uh, stand ready to support. And uh, if you have any questions throughout today, well, please put it in the chat. If you have questions that come after today, please feel free to contact any of the three agencies and we'll be very happy to answer to your questions and to support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, yeah, I, thanks for explaining, going through the entire, you know, even if quickly, the, the development process, which was very you know, lengthy, comprehensive and uh, inclusive. Um, and also giving us a, a, big, a bit of a, a flavor of what is in, in, in this uh, survey. Uh, I see that also uh, Aparna has posted on the chat the, the, the links to the, to the questionnaire, to the implementation manual. So uh, you are, of course, invited to take a look, but after the event, not now. Uh, now we uh, start the... Um, um, to have a, a, a few uh, re reflections from a, 
countries that actually participated in the pilot activities of this uh, uh, survey uh, module of development. So first, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Francisco Munguia from uh, Dihestic, I believe, uh, from El Salvador. Francisco, estás listo? Muy buenos días. Eh, fui correcto. Okay. Eh, muy buenos días. Eh, por, gracias por la oportunidad de presentar eh, la experiencia que en El Salvador eh, hemos tenido, ¿verdad? Respecto al tema de la El Salvador. This is about the. Uh... De discriminación. Solo me permiten eh, cargar una presentación rápida por acá. Yeah. I, I just kindly remind you that we have uh, yeah, five minutes and then I have a question. <laughs> bueno, eh, así de, de, de manera rápida. Ok, de manera rápida, cinco minutos, dicen, voy a tratar de, de resumir, ¿verdad? Este, la experiencia eh, y, y comenzar, pues, por decirles que básicamente en el esquema de producción. De, de la digestión hay una encuesta permanente que es la encuesta de hogares de propósitos múltiples que se aplica de enero a diciembre todos los años pero esa es una historia es una encuesta histórica que tenemos desde hace muchos años que no había tenido cambios importantes sin importar eh, la necesidad y el crecimiento de la demanda de información en el 2019 ¿verdad? nos dimos la tarea de hacer una revisión bastante eh, exhaustiva ¿verdad? de esta encuesta que tiene eh, como una muestra de aproximadamente 20.000 hogares ¿verdad? y tiene una composición multitemática de aproximadamente 10 módulos. Eso es, eso es lo que se tenía ¿verdad? prácticamente de manera permanente y se venía aplicando todos los años. En ese contexto de producción, eh, visualizamos que la demanda de información nos estaba creciendo de manera muy, muy importante. Y eso pues, nos llevó a reflexionar en cómo responder a esa demanda de información. Y no solo demanda en términos de contenido estadístico, sino eh, también en términos de tiempo, ¿verdad? Y naturalmente la, manteniendo la calidad. Eso nos presentó un desafío muy fuerte porque son demandas de información que no necesariamente vienen acompañadas de más recursos. Entonces, eso implica repensar un poco lo que se viene haciendo y naturalmente, pues, hacer los ajustes necesarios. Entonces, lo que vimos es, era una presión, pero también una oportunidad, ¿verdad?, de hacer más eficiente el cuestionario de esta encuesta de hogares que hemos venido implementando desde la década de los 70. Bueno, básicamente eh, eh, planteamos, ¿verdad?, eh, hacer la revisión quitando módulos que no eran del todo, ¿verdad?, no es porque no fueran necesarios, sino porque no tenían el uso que corresponde conforme a un sacrificio y, e inversión de recursos que hace la oficina. Y entonces, la, digamos, eh, el sacar esos módulos de la producción permanente permitió abrir espacios para que, la, para que entraran otros cuestionarios que se, eh, se están planteados realizarse de manera rotativa. Entonces, esta decisión no, no fue, digamos, una decisión tan rápida ni tan fácil porque implicó, ¿verdad?, modificar un cuestionario histórico, un cuestionario al que estaba acostumbrado ya casi todas las instituciones usuarias un cuestionario al que estaba acostumbrado nuestro personal operativo, nuestro personal metodológico y en sí la oficina, ¿verdad? Entonces fue una decisión estratégica, ¿verdad? Que se tomó de tal manera de que ahora, ¿verdad? Tenemos un cuestionario permanente que va de enero a diciembre que responde básicamente a temas de eh, tener una encuesta de empleo, ingreso y pobreza y a la vez dando el chance, ¿verdad?, o la oportunidad de que podamos incluir cuestionarios rotativos. En ese contexto, ¿verdad?, de, de producción, es que eh, 
nos planteamos re responder, ¿verdad? A esas, a, a esas eh, exigencias, digamos así. Más información, más oportunidad, ¿verdad? Y manteniendo la calidad, básicamente. Pero bueno, también nos planteamos que en este, en este nuevo esquema de producción de información, también la encuesta o, la, o la, los datos se eh, retomaran las últimas recomendaciones internacionales, sobre todo en el tema de fuerza de trabajo, planteadas por la última conferencia de estadísticos del trabajo de la OIT. En, ese, en este contexto es que pudimos también hacer ese ajuste metodológico ¿verdad? y conceptual, de tal manera de que logramos varios objetivos. Una encuesta que conceptualmente y metodológicamente venía desfasada, ¿verdad? Con, conforme a las nuevas recomendaciones, acoplarla, ¿verdad? Y también una encuesta que venía sobrecargada de información poco útil, también, ¿verdad? Darle el chance a que eso saliera para que entrara también eh, otros cuestionarios que son muy relevantes. Y estos cuestionarios pues responden básicamente a el tema de eh, necesidad de información coyuntural, ¿verdad? Necesidad de información para responder a objetivos de desarrollo sostenible, ¿verdad? Y también información vinculada a, compro a otros compromisos internacionales como el protocolo de San Salvador, el consenso de Montevideo, ¿verdad? Y otras agendas internacionales que están, digamos, en, la, en que tenemos en la mesa y sobre las cuales tenemos que dar reporte. Naturalmente, también para dar respuesta a planes de gobierno coyunturales que son los que de repente necesitan información más oportuna Francisco, y más Could you please uh, uh, try to wrap up? Because, uh, yeah, if you can finalize, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Could Ahorita, you... solo, solo, solo me refiero, solo me refiero básicamente a, a las últimas preguntas. ¿Por qué incluimos realmente el cuestionario de discriminación en el marco de la encuesta de hogares? Uno, porque eh, el cuestion, la encuesta lo permite. ¿verdad? Es un esquema flexible. Y lo otro, porque también está vinculado directamente a un objetivo de desarrollo sostenible, que es parte de los objetivos con los que se planteó realmente este nuevo esquema de producción para dar respuesta y ser también, y abrir más las, las posibilidades de respuesta. The... De manera muy rápida. Muchas gracias. ¿verdad? Eh, cualquier pregunta, pues estamos, por supuesto, para poderles... Eh, es responder y, por supuesto, enviamos la presentación o e información que sea requerida. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a ti, Francisco. Eh, disculpe. Sorry if I interrupted, but, in, but then uh, you also caught up with time because you asked, you answered the question directly. So why you selected uh, the module on discrimination? Thanks a lot uh, again. No, no, no. Hay, no. No hay cuidado, por supuesto. <laughs> okay, now... Um, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Ms. Renis Bunde from uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, who also uh, would like to share with us some lessons learned through the, during the pilot uh, exercise in Kenya. Renis, you are with us? Are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Please, the floor is yours. Sorry, I'm trying to put my camera on, but I'll continue. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Rene from Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. So I'm going to share with you some of the uh, from the pilot uh, survey that we did on SDG 60 indicators. Next. Hi. Yes. Yeah, so during the survey we targeted persons who are 18 years uh, and above and uh, we had uh, sampled uh, 25 households but we went ahead and uh, interviewed 25 households per cluster and uh, we only targeted one individual for those households and uh, we were also targeting usual members so we did this in august 2021 And uh, we only carried it out in uh, two of our counties, that is Nairobi City and Kiambu, which uh, are both urban 
in the rural areas. We used a uh, computer assisted personal interview and uh, we had the survey solution so installed. So this really assisted us and uh, we could uh, send the data to our server. And after that, we got a brief of the entire survey. So we did without replacement as was advised and uh, that was very good. So we contextualized the questions given to us and uh, it was a very, very nice practice. So our target was around 500 individuals, which we did. So it's like we over, you know, we had like 20 clusters and uh, initially we targeted 5,000, but we went ahead and uh, interviewed 35. So from there, we were able to get to reach the target. Yeah, being a pilot survey, you know, we were not looking at like uh, uh, like eighty percent or so. So we managed to get like almost hundred percent of targeted. Now, somebody has raised hand. Sorry, let me continue. Next. Go oh. Yeah. So from the modules that we are taken through by Mariana. Uh, we had like, uh, we took on average 40 minutes to administer questionnaire. And to us, this was okay because from the cognitive, we gave our experience or, or, or the average time, which took a little longer. So from that, at least the some of the que questions were short and we were able to administer it on, within four minutes. But there were some feelings from our viewers that some questions were too long. So I, sorry, I can't mention them here. And we uh, recommended that they be shortened and some probing questions made the, the respondents feel bored because they were like repeating some of the questions. Now, specifically on uh, human trafficking, you know, it's a rare event and uh, we didn't get much or several cases. So I know other countries also report on the same. So we'll even complement uh, with our administrative data that we can get enough information. And same to corruption cases, some people felt that uh, it is normal. So they were not really giving like uh, feeling is when it comes to giving information on corruption. And then on sexual violence, a number of respondents felt shy uh, because of the age difference between them and the interviewer. So we recommend that uh, when, whenever countries do uh, have this module, then they need to consider interviewers from all age categories, including elderly persons. And then based on some tab, we're not allowed conversations about sexual issues. So that was part of the experience. Next. Next. Yeah, now from the training, you know, we, 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 from Kenya, we conducted or carried out training like almost one and a half months prior to the data collection. We had challenges with the finances for getting the uh, uh, to our institution. So that took as long and uh, you know some of our interviewers might have forgotten or could have forgotten some of the concepts. So we did a training, one day refresher training just before they went to the field. So we realized that the time we are allocated for the training and practice before the team the field was not enough. So this, were, if at all countries planning to use all the modules that you are taken through, then enough time should be allocated. Then we translated our questionnaires into Swahili and we also used the version and it went, uh, it was okay. And uh, now we also local languages. And uh, the experience was that some of the texts were not all that easy to translate, like on sexual orientation among others. Next. Rainy and second so I'll try. <laughs> Thank Please. you very much. Yeah, I'm trying. Now, next steps, because uh, we had a nice experience with cognitive test and pilot survey, we are planning to carry out a optimization survey and another one on governance, peace, and security, which will cover all those more. And then we are also planning to improve our administrative data, especially targeting uh, of human uh, trafficking. Otherwise, thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Rainis. So the question you uh, that we had in mind for you, you already asked. So you already answered. So your plans to improve uh, uh, survey-based uh, uh, data on in this area of goal 16 are to conduct, uh, if I, yeah, if you can just reiterate what are the plans to conduct uh, surveys? Yeah, we are coming up with, uh, we are developing a, a comprehensive uh, proposal for surveys like uh, Vindic victimization survey and another one co covering governance piece and security indicators. Initially, we had thought of separate ones like uh, the one we got in the country where they were dealing with discrimination alone, but we felt from the, the questionnaire that we used during the pilot, it can cover almost all those. Things. So we are thinking of a comprehensive survey on governance, peace and security, as well as organization. So that we, are, we believe will assist mm -hmm. us. Thank you. Thank you, Renis. And we are, of course, happy to, yeah, to be of uh, to be of help, and then when we say we, of course, uh, refer to the three agencies behind the the the, the development of this initiative, and, and we really hope that this tool will be uh, used and useful uh, for Kenya. I see that there are already a few questions in the chat, and maybe just uh, also to yeah to um, to start answering uh, to these important questions. Maybe I, I can also. Take the liberty to answer to one to a few of them, and then ask uh, Mariana for the others. For example, how to um, raise awareness about policymakers of the importance of measuring uh, these indicators. Uh, and what yeah, uh, what we would say is that really uh, this should become a practice. If we want to improve governance, if we want to have a, a more effective, you know, and fair uh, govern governance, I think the, the the fact of producing and uh, disseminating data is is part integral part of that. We cannot uh, improve um, have policies without measurement, without monitoring. This should be uh, an area. This is, is what comes uh, from the the entire, for example, SDG framework. It's very important that this becomes really part of the any government activity, and also it's important uh, this also because uh, we believe uh, you know it. Uh, in, in today's uh, time, uh, there are many data. We know this. There are many data. There is a lot of information of the most different uh, quality. And uh, so it's better to, when, uh, to do this in a proper manner. This is also what we suggest to governments. Rather than uh, relying on you know, information on data or maybe fake information or fake data, but it's better to do that properly. Uh, then the other thing is that is this an independent survey or a package of tools? This is a what has been developed is something that can be is flexible, very much flexible. So it can be used either as a, a standalone survey if a country needs to conduct a, a kind of an overall catch all uh, survey, or of course it can be adapted to other and some modules can be. Uh, used and, uh, for example, added to other uh, existing house of service. Um, Mariana, there was a, a, if I can ask you uh, a few questions, if the, que the questionnaire can be self-administered or uh, the, if there is anything interesting we can report uh, in terms of failures or surprises uh, during the test uh, phases, uh, the pilot phases. Um, uh, first question, thank you very good. First question, uh, if it can be self-administered, uh, I can say frankly that we did not test that option, but if it can be uh, done with the interview, it should be able to be the self-administered, but that will need to be have considered separately. Mm -hmm. um, and the second question the, from Merico, was, was it sorry? If there were, you know, interesting uh, failures or surprises, uh, sur failure surprise. For, I yeah. Think yeah. One of the interesting things was on harassment. It was a very few uh, individuals in one of the countries. Uh, they thought that the behavior that it's uh, uh, classified as harassment is something um, a compliment, actually. The, and they stated that was there something very positive that meant that their wives or partners were concerned with them. So it was for the enumerator that was uh, 
uh, <laughs> that was quite surprising, but it means that we have to work much more and in explaining uh, what uh, Rasmus is, but this is not the job of the survey. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is real life experience. Um, okay, so yeah, let's continue now with, uh, with our uh, round of speakers. Thank you, Mariana. Um, uh, round of speakers. Uh, now we sh should be the turn of uh, Mrs. Uh, Ines Karat from, um, the, from Tunisia, from the presidency of the government. Ines. Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Enrico. So uh, thank you, Mariana, for sharing with us the presentation uh, of Tunisia. So uh, uh, we will present you the Tunisian experience and we want to share with you all what we have done uh, and even the K, uh, the success K. So uh, the, the first slide, please, the next one. So the, this, comp, uh, this work uh, started in Tunisia in 2014 when we contextualized the SDG 16 based on the UN proposal with uh, nine uh, targets. So in, uh, uh, in two, two, so, hello. Uh, Please, please go ahead. Okay. A Tunisian version of SDG 16 was developed with an adaptation, uh, adaptation of the version uh, of, and the goal, the targets, and the proposal of over 90 national indicators. And in 2016, the work entered a new phase through elaboration of a baseline study on SDG 16, who was elaborated in a participatory way with the, uh, with the participation of uh, representative of institution, government institution and civil society uh, to, uh, anal uh, to analyze uh, the data that uh, came from uh, the first uh, survey, national survey uh, on governance, peace and security, which is, was conducted by the National Statics Institute in 2014. Uh, the next slide, please. The SDG 16 pilot survey was conducted, another one was conducted in 2021 in part of the current efforts aimed at to improve the quality of data available on SDG 16. In fact, uh, the data uh, that was used in the 2016 in the elaboration of the baseline study was most relevant, but not specific to uh, the SDG 16 global indicators. And uh, the other uh, efforts is uh, how to strengthen the work at the local subnational level on SDG 16. In fact, uh, Tunisia hosted the regional uh, consultation in 2019 how, on how to localize the SDG 16, uh, where the importance of regional and local governments and uh, the actors was highlighted to ensure the achievement on goal 16. And the, uh, the other aim is to the other goal is to how to produce a first national progress report on SDG 16 that is also informed by the local, local realities. Uh, the next slide, please. So uh, the, the pilot process that we have conducted in Tunisia consists on three main uh, phases. The first uh, phase is how to contextualize the survey model to the Tunisian context, which was con uh, conducted in collaboration between us, the presidency of the government, the National Statical Institute, and the three agencies in charge of the survey, uh, UNDP, UNODC, and UHCR. This phase was conducted, uh, concluded in August 2021, and the second phase came uh, to uh, conduct, uh, who consisted on conducting this survey. Uh, Tunisia uh, take in, uh, in account the size of the sample for the pilot and the local focus. So we decided to conduct the survey in one of the 24 regions of the governorates of Tunisia. Namely, we chose in the, the region of Midnin. Uh, this, this choice was motivated by uh, the fact that through the, uh, the 500 respondent sample, representative result for the governorate will be obtained. On the other hand, the result of the survey 
could be used to inform the intervention that are part of an SDG 16 plus portfolio of project, with, uh, which was launched by the presidency of the government and UNDP in, in 2019. Uh, the survey was conducted the, the, in September uh, 2021. Uh, and, and uh, the third phase that uh, was uh, in how to analyze in a participatory uh, way the survey of the survey result at this and uh, to a, a series of uh, workshop technical support was provided to a mixed group of uh, representative of uh, public authorities and uh, civil society from the region of Medin. This uh, uh, in how to produce a series of policy briefs uh, in the main aspect covered by this local survey. This effort uh, are currently being completed by the support to a group of civil society organization of this region, the region of Medin, and to, uh, in order to prepare the first spotlight report on SDG 16 in the governorate. Uh, the next step, so in the coming weeks, uh, as soon as the health situation allows, a policy dialogue will be organized in the region of Medin, where the policy brief will be presented, uh, among other, uh, other participants, by the findings from the spotlight report and to inform the formulation of concrete recommendation to, uh, to, acceler to uh, accelerate the achievement of SDG 16 in Medin. And this uh, recommendation will be later translated into an action plan that will be implemented through existing intervention, like, for example, the project of the UNDP SDG 16 portfolio. So okay. the, uh, the same process of data collection, uh, the, the way how to analyze in a participatory manner and to inform it, dialogue to inform us policies will be also conducted at the national level during 2022. Oh, Ines, thank you, Ines. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I think you already, uh, you also, you know, also you anticipated the question. I already answered to that. I mean, you um, also showed that not only that the survey, uh, the pilot survey that you conducted, but also the fact that in this, uh, the governorate of Medellin, uh, actually from the survey, you also use the results of that also to start this policy dialogue yeah. uh, for using the results uh, for, yeah, for, because this is what we are aiming for. Uh, thanks a lot, Ines. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for this uh, thank opportunity. You. <laughs> thank you. Okay, now uh, we have the, uh, the last of our speakers that have, again, the ones that experienced the uh the pilot uh, exercise within the sdg 16 survey uh, i think uh, we have malene miss malene barbosa almeida from cape verde malene you are with us yes i am please <laughs> thank you enrico good morning everyone um i will be talking about the cabo verde's experience on conducting the cognitive and the pilot piloting the SDG 16 survey. Next, uh, you can move again, please. Thank you, again. <laughs> uh, Cabo Verde uh, conducted the cognitive test on the SDG 16 survey on August and September 2020. We interviewed 40 interviewers and it was applied uh, uh, shortly after the quarantine, and we had some uh, with restricted measures. Uh, we gave to the participants of the of the this cognitive test a COVID nineteen kit was given, included alcohol gel, masks, and a brochure, as you can see on this image. This was given uh, a, uh, as an incentive uh, for the interviewers and also because we were on the pandemic uh, of COVID-19. Next, please. Uh, the interviews were conducted at INE Cabo Verde facilities. As, as you can see here, we use some personal protective equipment to conduct interviews. 
apart from the COVID-19 kit that we gave to all participants. Next, please. Um, the main recommendations that we, uh, some lessons learned that we have from the cognitive test was that the questionnaire was too long. Um, some questions were very repetitive through the questionnaire. And um, since the SDG 16 survey is a sensitive uh, survey, we thought that uh, from the experience within this cognitive test that um, this social distance because of the COVID-19 did not favor the openness from the respondents. This is because uh, as we were wearing masks and we have some distance, they might, they didn't feel comfortable to answer some questions. Uh, next, please. Next. Uh, then in 2021, we conducted the pilot test uh, as well in July and August 2021. It was conducted in Santiago in three regions of the main island of Cabo Verde, Praia, the capital of Cabo Verde, Tarrafal, and Santa Cruz and Mayu Island. We use um, the CAPI approach face-to-face -face, and the field work. The field team was composed by 70% of female and 30% of male. Next, please. Um, the average length of each interview was one hour and 15 minutes uh, with mandatory and non-mandatory questions. We applied, with, uh, uh, we applied always the mandatory and non-mandatory questions. Uh, INE use its own script instead of service solution script. This is because when we uh, when we conducted this survey, it was um, right after the census, so we could not we couldn't use our service solution uh, systems because they were busy. Uh, if I can say like this, to the census that was con that was being conducted in that period. We interview 510 individuals aged 18 and over. 63% were female and 36% was male. Next, please. Uh, here, uh, I'm showing some examples of the results we get from, from ex for example, from the security model. This is one of the questions that how safe do you feel walking alone in our in your neighborhood at night? Very safe, safe and safe and very unsafe. And this uh, one, I don't usually go out alone at night. It, it was an option that we added. It was not included in the um, SDG 16 survey. And it was one of our suggestions. Next, please. As governance, uh, uh, this is an example of what we 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 had as respondents. Uh, next, please. As discrimination, uh, we suggest to rephrase the questions because, as I mentioned uh, before, we think that the questions are very long and people will uh, people got lost during the questions because it was very long. Next, please. Uh, now, uh, some lessons learned and rec recommendation. Uh, when translating the, the, um, the questionnaire to English, then to Portuguese, and to local language, sometimes some uh, word was not easy for us to translate it. Uh, to reduce the length of the questionnaire, it is very long and um, as I mentioned before, we were uh, the average was one hour and fifteen minutes. Normally, people will not spend all that time to respond to a survey uh, because they were uh, arguing that they have something to do. Um, um, then, uh, 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 one of the main constraints to continue to to conduct this type of survey might be financial resources. Uh, uh, the long, long question formulations and people get lost in the middle. I have um, mentioned it before. 
and uh, we as we were not using the service solution script we were we were using our own that is uh, sg system um, mm -hmm. sge platform uh, we had to work with 1000 variables that's too long um, because the the platform was a little bit out to date so okay. it was a very long. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Malena. Oh, so sorry. No, thank you. I also, thank yeah, you. I thanks also for the recommendations that you expressed and that were also, I, at least my, to my knowledge, uh, <laughs> at least partially incorporated in the final, uh, in the final version of the, of the questionnaire. Uh, and also, you know, it was also interesting how you faced uh, and how you addressed the challenges of doing, you know, these activities during the, during the pandemic. Uh, thank you again. Um, there were a, a few questions again in the chat, so maybe I can ask uh, uh, Mariana, just one, uh, one uh, we'll take a couple of them together. How, um, uh, how you managed to get trust from respondents to respond, to answer to sensitive questions and uh, if there are specific ethical protocols as they are for um, when uh, implementing questions, when asking questions on very sensitive topics like uh, in relation to uh, forms of violence or, for example, or discrimination. Um, Mariana, you... I'm here. Yeah, yeah, if you have a, a few seconds just to reply. Yeah. So, all this and of course, yeah, information this, is in the manual, but okay, just yeah. uh, <laughs> all the trust. I think um, all the pilots were better to start, but when it was done, the questionnaire, the flow of the questionnaire is increasingly on intimacy, so it gives time for the enumerator to, to um, get acquainted with the interviewee and then develop. So that was a concern that, so that, that's why the sequence that they currently have. Uh, the, the second question was, sorry. Um, yeah, about the ethical protocols. Uh, so the ethical protocols, yeah. so, uh, as you were saying, there are several guidelines, but is, there's ethical pro uh, protocols, but also safety protocols in terms of uh, what's to be done why, during the interview, for instance, we know for uh, for some type of violence, the, the perpetrator might be someone in the household. So it is advised that uh, when the interview is ongoing, that no one is in the in the household. If someone comes in, that interview is interrupted. That uh, because of sensitivity of certain question, that uh, also the interview is not done with uh, children so above uh, a to toddler mm -hmm. age. So there are certain several uh, guidelines uh, on that sense. Thank you, thank you, Mariana. Of course, we are we are trying to run against time, but of course there are some of these uh, I mean of these protocols in the in the manual, which are again which are uh, also based on the good practices uh, that are already used in many countries. Um, I uh, now I would like to ask now um, that the other yeah uh, <laughs> to intervene the other. Uh, our uh, speak guests, uh, those who have some who didn't really actively uh, directly participate in the panel, but still have some uh, you know interesting reflections uh, on this initiative. And first, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Mustafa Kawaya from the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics. Mustafa, you are with us. Must Mustafa, you are with us, uh, or can you hear us? Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Please. Th thank you. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you. I'm following, but sometimes the, the internet <laughs> is losing me. So I will again switch off my camera in order just to save more uh, power for the, inter, uh, for the presentation. Uh, so thank you very much for this uh, invitation and joining uh, uh, our uh, experience to present it to uh, uh, this uh, important session. Uh, uh, within uh, during my five minutes, I will try to uh, 
uh, highlight the idea of the partnership and the, import the importance of the interrelations uh, on the national uh, level, uh, as well as the regional and international cooperation to produce uh, more uh, data on uh, SDG 16 in particular, but also uh, for the whole uh, of the SDGs agenda. Uh, and uh, how we did in our uh, Palestinian experience, the uh, SDG 16 survey, but uh, uh, by, let's say, uh, piece, pieces uh, uh, through integrating some questions uh, uh, within our running uh, surveys. Actually, we didn't uh, 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 piloting, uh, piloted the uh, survey itself as is in its uh, final format, but we believe that we uh, went through the, the process indirectly and we had uh, the uh, outcome of our work. As you can see, thank you for moving the slide without even uh, asking. Uh, uh, once uh, uh, additional click, we can see the whole uh, the whole uh, relations on the national uh, level uh, in uh, Palestine. How it is not so complicated, but actually it is complementary work among many uh, national partners who are uh, uh, working on uh, producing the data on SDGs, uh, uh, SDG 16 in particular, which is implied and uh, applicable for all of the agenda. As you can see, you can find uh, uh, many institutions are data providers. And here in the next, uh, in the next slide, can we move to the next one, uh, please? Uh, we can see the output, the result of such work that we we reach in Palestine about 160 uh, indicators that uh, fulfilled. And here we are not talking about the most recent data to refer to 2021, for example, but at least we have uh, recent uh, data on these uh, uh, indicators. Once come to the next slide, please, uh, to show the progress on uh, 16, we can find on our internal mapping that we saw the uh, 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 nine indicators uh, of which uh, eight are already fulfilled, which means uh, we have uh, a very high uh, achievement so in, on these indicators, but we, see, we still uh, uh, need to work on five indicators that not from the from the surveys, but also we need to work on uh, on the administrative records that uh, complement uh, the whole work. Uh, next, please. Yeah, uh, we try to map the the uh, what we did over the surveys or the statistical activities that we integrate the questions that related to these to these uh, 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 indicators, and we you can see the list of the surveys that we run uh, over the last uh, three or four uh, years uh, to uh, collect the data. Uh, on these indicators, and this is the list of the uh, surveys on our left uh, left hand, and we can find on the right hand the indicators that we integrate uh, within. So overall, we will in con conclude at the end that in, 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 in instead of having integrating uh, these parts within different uh, uh, surveys, we can do the uh, survey uh, the 16 survey as uh, one uh, unit. Next, please. Uh, uh, we did the same mapping in the next slide, please. Uh, uh, we, we did uh, the, uh, the mapping for the data sources for the admin data. As you can see, we, you can find and uh, see the, the ministries or the agencies or the entities, the Palestinian entities, uh, or even the international, uh, like the, the OHCHR uh, uh, final uh, 
final uh, response on on 16A1, uh, and 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 we conclude with having uh, these indicators from these sources. But still, uh, we need one to update what we have. Uh, two, we need to fulfill the uh, uh, remaining uh, uh, indicators. Uh, next one, please. So here is the conclusion that we still need to work uh, uh, by the five indicators. And you can see we are uh, almost uh, passing half of the way in terms of the indicators at least. And even uh, in, uh, for us, uh, gold 16 is DG 16 is uh, uh, in line with the with the total uh, uh, availability. So it is, uh, um, uh, let's say, better uh, than the average in general on the global level. But we still uh, ambitious to update what we have and to fulfill the last five indicators. I can stop here and I can uh, um, um, just to be on time uh, as uh, precisely we have to pass uh, uh, this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mustafa. You were totally <laughs> on time. Thanks a lot. And also, uh, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I was impressed to see that uh, yeah, pa Palestine is a uh, <laughs> One exception, I would say, in terms of availability of data in uh, for this uh, uh, goal for goal sixteen. So I I see that only I understand that only for five indicators you are not yet able to produce data, and uh, probably maybe for this, uh, for example, I didn't uh, I couldn't uh, uh, the one on corruption on bribery maybe that can be is one of uh, those where. The survey, the, this survey modules can be useful for for you to, to implement. We have we we have both the bribes. We have it, so but we need to update, of course. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Mustafa. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, okay, now uh, I see uh, Adrian that has been patiently waiting <laughs> for uh, his <laughs> turn. Uh, Adrian from. Um, the Vice President of uh, INEGI, the National Institute for Statistics and Geography uh, from Mexico. Uh, Adrian, the floor is yours to share your thoughts on this initiative, please. Um, thank you very much, Enrico. I hope you, you um, heard very well to me, <laughs> listen to me. Um, first of all, um, I hope everyone, well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon. And I really hope you and your families and colleagues are very well at this time. Thanks for the invitations to, to the invitation for being here to the organizers of this side event. I have uh, listened uh, uh, very carefully the, 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 the exposition at the presentation and also the, the people um, previously speaking in this, uh, this side event, very important side event. And uh, let me uh, allow me to share with you some uh, reflections about opportunities and, and some limitations of this SDG survey. Um, for statisticians, um, indicator is a very powerful word. Um, besides technical and conceptual definition, it is uh, very good indicators are the result of many, many processes in order to construct the indicator, to understand the indicator, and um, to, to display all the, all the processes in which we have to construct information uh, and the right information in order to fulfill this, the, the, the indicator. So um, this is very important and, um, and indicators are uh, at the end, very powerful reference instruments in order to know the position of some phenomenon in, at a specific time. So this is, this is the case for SDG 16 indicators. And uh, we have uh, been learning a lot of uh, in, in, in the process of the SDG indicators. And uh, now uh, or today, global international um, statistical community, now uh, the, the difficulties and challenges when we talk about SDG 16 indicators, not just because several complexities uh, related to one indicator or another indicator itself, but also related to the production of data and statistics for completing or fulfilling such indicators. So we know now that uh, there are many SDG indicators that uh, there are no information to fulfill, that we have to work 
even hardy to, to meet that goal, to fulfill these, those indicators. In the middle of uh, these complexities and this uh, learning process, uh, SDG 16 survey initiative is very important. And it is important because it can help some countries, some countries in order to advance in the report of specific SDG indicators, as we have heard from the presentation and from a previous intervention. So as Angela said, and, and, and Mariana, this is a new survey, it's a new experience in order to approach to the, to the, to the fulfilling and, and to produce information in order to fulfill this SDG indicator. So this is very important for countries even more for countries that have few or limited data to report in these indicators. But it is also important to the monitoring systems inside UN agencies that in order to have more data from more countries. So this initiative, of course, can reduce these data gaps on SDG 16. Um, we also have to recognize that we have a very important um, uh, instrument the questionnaire or the questionnaires. So which uh, were constructed by expert knowledge with people from UN agencies in charge of this, from a, a, a personal expert or, or, or people expert on this and fundamental contribution from countries. We have uh, listened um, the, the many, many examples with uh, when they pilot testing or with the cognitive testing from, uh, for example, Kenya or Cabo Verde, and where, where they say, well, our experience was like this, and the, this experience has to be in, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in, in the questionnaire and in, in the process of implementation. So, um, of course, we have a very valuable instrument, but also this instrument has uh, some limitations. Um, I would like to stress two limitations. First, it is clear that SDG 16 survey initiative is a second option. I mean, is the second best option. It is just behind specialized standalone surveys. This is not the same instrument. So it means SDG 16 survey with the standalone specialized surveys are not the same, are not equal. Our main object in, uh, as official statisticians related to governance, crime and justice is to promote, to develop and implement um, a strong specialized standalone surveys like national victimization surveys, violence against women, national surveys, access to justice, national surveys, or surveys related to corruption and quality of public services, among many other. Um, we know that um, these, these kind of surveys are very expensive and uh, well, it, it costs a lot of money. And they require a lot of investments of uh, technical capabilities, human resources, and of course, budgetary resources. And there is a lot of restriction, but in that sense, this is important for, for the SDG 16 survey because if, if we understand the standalone, the solid comprehensive, of course we can help public policy making. And this is an opportunity to SDG 16 initiative in order to be a first window, a first experience in order to advance to the next, to the next level. And second limitation is more technical one, maybe, and it is related to the implementation of SDG 16 survey in any place. Today, of course, we have a very strong questionnaire, but we don't have control in the implementation of, of, of such, such survey. Countries, even when we have a very nice, and very, very important manual, uh, we know that every country will implement this according to the different capabilities and different conditions. So we know that countries will define sample size and sample composition in different ways. Uh, or countries will use different collection methods, for example, CATI, CAPI, by telephone, by internet, face-to-face. -face. So, uh, or even that some countries will give this, the questionnaire to an enterprise or consultant who will implement the, 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 the survey according to another different method. So uh, these techni technicalities will have impacts on quality of data representatives and, and, and possible comparability. And this is important to, to, to take it in, into account. So. We have to register all the details case by case in order to know the specific characteristics of data. It means the metadata and the possible comparability. Of course, the possible optimistic pathway, and I will conclude with this, uh, the optimistic pathway for the future is that some countries that implement this first SDG survey 16, SDG 16 survey initiative will, after this, 
to implement standalone specialized survey as the case of, of Kenya, for example, very, very optimistic uh, in, in the future. So our main focus is to, to fortify our national statistical systems in relation to governance, crime and justice statistics, not just in order to know our situation or to complete indicators, but to change the situation and to improve the circumstances of every, every country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, Adrian. And also in a way, thanks for the, yeah, the, I think very interesting and also, you know, challenging um, comments you made. Uh, because I, I think, of course, we, we I think everybody's fully aware that uh, uh, this is not the solution for everything. Yeah, it's not the best solution. Uh, but we know that, you know, there is I often uh, refer to this as American saying, that perfection is enemy of the good. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, we um, think, and also as you said, I think this can, we can see as a kind of a, a step into that direction. No, as a kind of a gradual uh, process, uh, a process where we can uh, all go towards. I mean, stronger, you know, <laughs> stronger surveys, stronger standards. But again, this is a. Uh, we are in many different situations. Uh, the world is very big and diverse, and we, with this tool, we hope that uh, yeah uh, we can go into that right direction. I think, and of course, we will also learn from uh, you know the experience of Mexico that yeah was able to develop a very powerful, I mean, a very comprehensive and uh, high quality system of surveys in this area. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, lot. Enrico. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Oh, this is the. Uh, uh, our, we have our last speaker, Solly. Solly from um, Solly is the chief director for social statistics at uh, Statistics South Africa. Solly, the floor is yours to, to yeah to share with us your reflections, please. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think we can load the slides. Thank you, and uh, the next slides, please. I'm here to share my our experiences in Statistics South Africa. Uh, firstly, we'll just go through quickly in terms of what informs our, our work in terms of this uh, government statistics. We'll look at what is our response from the statistical point of view. And I think I will uh, reflect on how we can actually um, improve on the data availability. Next slide, please. Uh, from South Africa, we are informed by, firstly, uh, by our constitution, uh, especially when you zoom into chapter two, uh, which is what what is also driving our work in from the government uh, governance statistics. We do have our NDP, which is our national development plan. We have our own strategic plan as government. And since we are from the African continent, we are also guided by the agenda 2063 and also the, uh, the SDGs. Next slide, please. So all these frameworks that I've mentioned, we are sort of overlaying them on top of each other. Um, I think uh, the previous speaker spoke about the indicators. So there are different indicators coming from different uh, frameworks. And so as an SNSO, we have to respond to those indicators. And from our point of view, how do we respond to this? We, because I think the previous speakers also have mentioned that it's very costly to conduct a surveys. So we do, we had a survey where we were concentrating on the victimization and now to broaden the scope and also to include some of these indicators that we are not uh, uh, measuring, we came up with a governance public safety uh, justice survey. Next slide, please. So the point of departure from ourselves is was to develop a framework that will guide our work um, from a statistical point of view. And we have a sort of a, a five themes of government statistics. And these are the, the themes that are almost aligned to the SDG, the 2063, and also other frameworks that are dealing with the governance statistics. Next slide, please. There was a lot of consultation from our side. Um, as I said, we had to consult some of the manuals that are available across the country. We also have to do our own internal consultation with the government departments, civil societies, um, and now the initiative, the new initiative uh, that, that we are discussing today is also going to be part of the, the, the consultation uh, manual that we are going to look at it and all the other international agencies that we have uh, consulted in the previous years. Next slide, please. So the plan was to come up with a 
three-year rotation plan um, because I think the previous, my colleagues from uh, 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 Kenya and also from, from Tunisia, they were talking about the length of the questionnaire. So we have to find a way to sort of come up with a plan in terms of how we do we rotate this content. And you see, we have done the first leg uh, of, this, uh, uh, of the first uh, three-year rotation uh, where we've done this type of rotations. Now we are getting into a new cycle of three years. Um, we have done uh, year one of the new cycle and April, 2021, uh, we did the year two um, of, 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 of the second uh, uh, rotation. And some of these modules that are appearing on the screen, uh, your access to justice, um, they are in line with the modules that are already being discussed. And I think the participation in public affairs uh, it will also be one of the modules that we're also going to look at it, including corruption and, and, and experience of uh, victimization and feelings of safety also. Next slide, please. So these are some of the things that are, I think some of my thoughts around how best we can look at the data availability. Um, obviously we have to look at, you know, building these core modules. Um, the existing module obviously will help us, but then we also need to think about, especially with the surveys that are existing, how do we integrate it into that module? Come up with some potential criteria in terms of identifying these core questions, because when you're having a plan, uh, you will have to think about which are the core modules that, or core questions that we are introducing. Um, from South African point of view, we will still continue with our three-year rotation plan um, that, especially now in the context of the COVID-19, um, the issue of translation, I think the colleagues have already mentioned this before, um, the modules must be easily able to be translated into local languages. Uh, optimization of the user of a data admin, um, I think colleagues have already mentioned that uh, we need to find a way, how do we bring in also the admin data source? As we are talking about including this manual into the existing uh, surveys, we need to think about the impact on the cost. Uh, it should be limited. Uh, it shouldn't be overloading the questionnaire because as I said, there's other national and regional indicators that these surveys are also measuring. Think about the, uh, the sample size. Um, if it increases the sample size, it means that the cost will also go up. Um, and I think the ultimate goal for, from ourselves is to develop a justice strategy uh, that will bring together the data sources, not only coming from our NSO, but from other data uh, producers uh, with the aim of building this justice data ecosystem that will provide a comprehensive information on, just, on access to justice in South Africa. Thank you. Sally, thanks a lot. I think it was a, uh, from your presentation, we, it, it, uh, it seems like a kind of a, a dream uh, coming through because I, we see already a kind of a, a work plan, uh, I mean, a three year work plan with a cycle where, uh, as I understand correctly, if I understand correctly, you will use these modules uh, or largely use these modules to implement uh, in, the, in your country. For producing this data, so it's a yeah. This is a very concrete and uh, uh, very uh, effective solution, I would say, to to take to really to use this uh, tool that has been developed and make it uh, true. Yeah. So thanks a lot. That's really encouraging. That's really encouraging to see uh, <laughs> already this uh, result. And um, uh, yeah, I think we have now, that's incredible news. We are almost on time. We have uh, listened to all our speakers. There are a few uh, questions that are still unanswered, but uh, okay, I think maybe some of them we will uh, answer uh, also in the follow-up with the, 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 among us, uh, colleagues from UNDP or colleagues from uh, Human Rights uh, Agency, uh, from the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Only one thing I would say at the stage before giving the floor to uh, Francesca for her final uh, her final remarks um, is that of course we this is a, we are all aware we are just at the start yeah we are just at the start even if we started years ago we are just at the start of this process uh, to make this uh, uh, become true yeah to to use these tools to really make the data produce the data. This is what we uh, aim for. We you see that in this area, SDG 16, there is still an important lack of data. And uh, uh, I think that with this tool, with the 
the efforts yeah, of these agencies and also the efforts that we are already see at the national level, um, we can improve the situation. Uh, you know, the architecture of uh, producing data, international data is very complex. We have a national partners who, uh, of course, have to respond to many uh, counterparts in the countries. We have international agencies who have different, you know, uh, different mandates, uh, capacities. Uh, and so, so we are trying to, to find the common, the common denominator when producing this data. And I think that uh, if we all uh, strive for having this uh, you know, data produced according to this standard, more or less uh, standard um, methodologies, even if we know that uh, the methodologies are always very complex, there are always decisions to be made. So it, there's nothing completely you know, standard, uh, but at least there is a, a, a common ground, a sufficient quality for this data to, produce, to be produced. This is the our really our intention. Our and the, we will be really happy to assist countries in different ways. Again, the three agencies for their respective uh, you know, uh, capacities, uh, uh, skills, and the competencies in implementing this uh, this uh, this service. Um, I would like now to give the floor to Francesca Francesca Marotta, who is chief of the methodology education training. Um, uh, section or branch at uh, the the office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, Francesca, are you there? Yes, please. Francesca, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, um, Enrico. And I'm very pleased to be here as uh, Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights together with uh, UNDP and UNODC colleagues. And in fact, many of our national partners uh, in uh, advancing uh, the SDGs and human rights through indicators and a human rights based approach to uh, data. Um, I want to, of course, thank all the speakers who took part in the discussion and share their valuable experience and uh, insights and also offer some, uh, yes, concluding remarks, but also some reflections uh, out of the um, discussion uh, during this event. Um, six years ago, uh, states committed to foster peaceful, just and inclusive societies, free from fear and violence and leaving no one behind, recognizing that effective, inclusive, accountable institutions ser serve as enablers for all other SDGs. And as we have uh, um, discussed today, the SDG 16 uh, survey is a new addition to our implementation uh, toolbox. Um, the, the discussion today uh, gave us really uh, an overview of the initiative, but also um, I think um, a lot of material in terms of experiences and insights through our speakers that can help us further reflect on how the survey tool can be better implemented in support of member states' efforts in addressing data gaps in monitoring SDG 16 indicators, and also informing policy making in relation to human rights, uh, governance, and access to justice. And it was very interesting to uh, hear also some of the insights that had to do with the uh, really um, uh, how the survey can reflect um, a human rights based approach to uh, data collection. And, uh, and analysis. There were a number of points that I'd like to just quickly focus on that I thought were um, particularly important and interesting. Uh, there is a need to uh, continuously engage in uh, advocacy uh, to raise awareness among policymakers about the availability of this tool in order to address the lack of data in support of policies on human rights and governance. We have heard that coordinated efforts to break uh, embedded forms of discrimination and harassment uh, must accompany the implementation of the, um, of the survey tool itself. Uh, and this will help improve uh, the, the cognitive understanding uh, by respondents of the concepts that are covered by the questions, but most importantly, it will also help address hidden or normalized patterns of discrimination and abuses. Um, we must also uh, walk the talk and foster inclusive data collection practices. For example, the identification of groups left behind uh, and then taking positive steps to empower these groups to participate in survey contextualization, uh, implementation, analysis, and, and dissemination. 
Uh, this requires obviously a significant investment in a human rights based survey design, training and analysis. So the, the basically the SDG 16 survey challenges us to recalibrate and upgrade the way we do uh, household surveys and censuses. Uh, from our perspective, I would also like to highlight perhaps a bit more the demogra demographic module of the, of the survey, uh, because from a human rights perspective, this module expands the scope of data disaggregation and paves the way for groups that have never been counted uh, before to be counted. It brings together uh, international standards for measuring human rights issues, uh, uh, sexual, including sexual orientation and gender identity, disability, ages, internal displacement, migration, and other experiences. So this module in particular um, not only shows that uh, spotlighting the sensitive issues uh, is really a, a, an imperative for us, but it also proves that it is feasible in practice. Um, the, uh, the COVID pandemic um, has brought extraordinary challenges to our world, uh, eroding years of progress across all the SDGs, including, of course, stalling progress on SDG 16. If we um, reflect for a moment, gaps that were already too wide only got wider. Inequalities within and among countries have worsened. Uh, the, pandemic, the pandemic has intensified poverty, inequalities, stigma, discrimination, and exclusion patterns, leaving, uh, in fact, much of humanity behind, including women, older persons, youth and children, migrants, refugees, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, and other vulnerable groups which are, who are among the most deeply um, affected. Affected. Uh, building back better from the pandemic, uh, we all agree, requires accurate timely and relevant data. Uh, no strategy can be developed and no action can be implemented without adequate monitoring and uh, evaluation. Uh, the ability of governments to respond effectively and to achieve a better recovery will actually depend on the availability of data. And despite the disruptions to statistical operation that has been driven by the pandemic, new partnerships, data innovations and new measures have been introduced that have profoundly changed the statistical production process in many countries. Collection of disaggregated data using a human rights based approach on discrimination and inequalities can go a long way to diminish the adverse effects of the uh, effects of the pandemic on those most left behind and without disaggregation, uh, of course, discrimination can remain hidden in data, which is a form of discrimination itself. Uh, just as stronger and new forms of partnerships are required to deliver on the SDGs, political will backed up by sufficient financial and technical resources is needed to advance the SDG 16 survey initiative country level. And we've heard some of our speakers um, stressing exactly that. The discussion today also demonstrated how governments, national human rights institutions, national statistical offices, and other members of national statistical system each have unique but interlocking roles to play to contribute to the implementation of the survey. In this context, uh, uh, as Office of the High Commission for Human Rights, we, we will continue to support collaboration between national human rights institutions and national statistical offices to operationalize the human rights-based approach to data as an instrument to increase trust in data, improve visibility of groups left behind and reinforce uh, equality and non-discrimination. Uh, as of today, we have 11 memorandum of understanding in place in all continents, some with the institutions represented here today. Uh, these relationships are really valuable in implement, implementing and measuring progress within the 2030 agenda. We must, by working together, including within the UN system uh, and with national partners, we must continue to build uh, momentum. We have very ambitious goals, but they can be achieved if we capitalize on our collective experience and knowledge. And I speak also with my colleagues in UNDP and UNODC by saying that within our specific areas of responsibilities, custodianship responsibilities and expertise, we stand ready to provide, to continue to provide technical advice to countries implementing specific modules 
or the full survey, including support to national contextualization of questionnaires, data processing, analysis of results and dissemination, and the detailed technical implementation manual, of course, will be of help in implementing the survey and is now available. We look very much forward to uh, continuing to work closely with each one of you and thank you very much for being a part of this important effort to advance progress towards more peaceful, just and inclusive uh, uh, societies. Thank you again. Thank you, Mar thank you, Francesca. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks also for bringing this uh, you know, additional uh, complementary I would say, perspective. Um, I think in this process, we also have learned a lot, each of us, uh, and I, this is also the inv invitation also for you know, colleagues that, uh, in, the, in the countries that uh, not to be afraid, yeah? not to be afraid, we can do it, yeah? we can do it, uh, uh, we can uh, produce this data, take into account the methodological concerns we have, take into account the different, you know, perspectives on making to make sure that uh, you know, the data of good quality on all uh, population groups uh, are properly collected and uh, disseminated. Of course, in a, take into account the, all the, the best possible protocols also to, uh, to ensure them that all, also the other data, this data are collected uh, in a way that we always fully respect human rights of everybody. Um, there is a final request, Francesca, thanks a lot. There is a final request from uh, Mariana that we take a group picture, all of us. I mean, whoever is uh, here. So we, wanna, we don't want to leave anybody behind. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so if you turn on the camera, hoping that the, the system will not crash, uh, We'll be yeah happy to take a picture. Uh, Mariana, you tell us when we are. Okay, so everyone looks really, really great. So three, two, <laughs> one, and a beautiful smile. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. There are many people to thank for this event, of course, for everything that has been uh, done so far. The people in the you know colleagues in the in the in the in, the, in our agencies. Uh, so really many and all the speakers of today uh thanks a lot for your patience for your contribution uh, we know it always takes time to prepare to, to uh, for such an event so and i hope this was a, a fruitful and a rich of a uh, inspiration event for us it was um thanks a lot again and see you soon for the implementation of these surveys thank you stay in touch with us Bye-bye.